Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video is going to give you an update on that handshake miner, the Bitmain Ant Miner HS3. So we're going to give an update on profitability, what it looks like, what the prices look like, and what profitability is going to look like after the halving, right? They have a halving coming up fairly soon. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about how to calculate it because it's not as simple as just going on ASIC miner value and dividing it by two, right? So we're going to go over that. We'll talk about it, give you that update, see if it's worth getting, right? So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned, all right? And also, guys, just a quick little thing. If you find value in the content, guys, please consider subscribing. We're so close to that thousand subscriber mark. So if you do find find, find some value, guys, please consider subscribing. All right, let's get to it. So Handshake, it's looking at the overall price action. This is on a three-month chart, looking pretty good. Right, we know crypto as a whole has been doing fairly well since pretty much the beginning of the year. Right, essentially, right on the first, a couple days after, been on a nice uptrend. Right, so it's a very, very good note. The handshake is also on that trend. Right, these are the things we want to look for. We want to see if it's following the market, especially this one because it's such a small market cap that it can very easily kind of do its own thing. Right. So it's, again, very similar to like how CKB was, where it's just following that trend, right? Luckily, CKB, again, has been keeping that trend. But like KDA, on the other hand, has been doing too hot, right? Which hasn't been doing bad. It's just definitely not on such an uptrend, right? As long as it's not going down, that's what we want. Again, this is the bear market. But at the same time, we want to keep up with the market. We want to keep up with that orange coin. As it goes up, we want to keep up with it. Right. Definitely, definitely want to follow that trend and continue that trend on into the future, especially into the having. Right. All right. So things are looking good there. Let's look at the overall profitability. OK, this is what kind of had me on doing the video because this past weekend, I don't know if you guys noticed, but if any guys happen to catch mine, the ASIC, the HS3 was actually number one for the weekend. Right. It was incorrect, though. OK. So pretty much over the weekend, it was like 18 bucks or something like that, right? It was significantly high. So I got kind of excited. I was like, oh man, HNS got to be pumping. So I went to look at the chart and nothing really there, right? It's going up, going down, but nothing that would cause, you know, a 50% increase in the profitability, right? So I was like, okay, maybe, you know, something happened with the hash rate, right? So look at the hash rate, nothing there, right? So it's just an error on mine the ASIC, either the API, pull issue, wherever we're getting the info from, or it could be something as simple as they were just not taking out the electrical or the electric cost, even though it was accounted for, right? Whatever the reason though, looks like it's updated and it's currently at 1264, right? Currently number four, which just looks pretty good, right? And I think this is why a lot of people have been getting so interested in it lately is just because a lot of the other ones started leveling out, right? So like the K7 was in the $20, $25 range for the longest. But again, the profitability started going down. Same story with the K3, right? It was 50, 40, 30, 20, and now ultimately about 10 bucks, right? So now that those two guys have leveled off, everything's fairly close now, right? The difference being is the price of the miner though, right? We look at the number one, two, and three, 5,300, 6,800, 5,300. And then this guy at 2,800, right? And then even the next one's 8,300, 6,600. So when you see this 2,800 and you see the fact that it only uses 2,000 watts, it's going to make $12 and some cents a day and the ROI is seven months. It's looking pretty good, right? So it makes you want to look into it. <clears throat> so that's the reason for the update on the vid. So let's talk about this though, Okay. The big lingering thing is the having. There is a having coming up. It's in about 38 days. We'll talk about it a little bit down the road. Let's look at one very interesting thing, though, right? As we all know, the trio of the miners were announced about the same time, the K7, K3, HS3, right? Ultimately, there's been two more. There's now the E9 and the Dash, but let's talk about this guy. So the biggest, biggest factor we've been looking at is the effect on the hash rate. Right. We saw what happened with the K3. We saw what happened with the K7. Didn't know how it was going to go with this guy. Right. 
especially because the network is so much smaller and just the project as a whole, right? The market cap, everything is tiny, right? In comparison to the others. Okay, so that last vid I did, we saw that only like a thousand units would have a huge effect, right? And one interesting note on this was in that Twitter spaces right before the initial drop, right? So right before the actual release, they did have that Twitter spaces with the handshake team and they were asked about it, right? And they did say that they were, their goal was to not let the hash rate get affected to the point where it was going to devastate it, right? So pretty much not release as many units as others, right? We didn't know if they were just saying that, if they're going to be full of crap, but for the most part, at least now, seems like they kept their word, right? It pretty much dropped around the same time as that initial batch of K7, so right at like the end of January, a lot of people did receive theirs. It did not go up much, right? Give or take only about 20%. Right, it's kind of sporadic, right? It's anywhere from three and a half to four, and then now currently it's about five, five and a half, right? So overall, about a twenty percent increase, which means that it looks like only a couple hundred units were shipped, right? It's hard to give an exact number, even if we do the calculations, because we can't account for the amount who shut off after this, et cetera, et cetera. But we do know it's in the hundreds, very low amount, very small amount, right? Because even like just a hundred units. Right, is a what, 120 is about a petahash. So again, not very many units at all. And let's confirm that number. So again, about a 20-25% increase. And even on like miningpoolstats.stream, they have it about 5.35. So give or take, again, it jumps up and down. So it's about in that ballpark range. But overall, not a very big jump, which is good to see. Now though, one thing to consider. Could that have been almost like a fake out, right? Can it be just that small increase and now people are hyped up on it and then this next batch is a much bigger batch? Very possible, right? So again, we don't know to what extent, purely speculation. Hopefully it's only just a couple of hundred units again, but don't be too surprised that they drop them on us. <laughs> if they drop like 500 units or a thousand units, it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility. Right. Again, I like to look at it as worst case scenario, but again, hopefully it's only a couple of hundred units versus like, you know, 500 or a thousand units. Right. Because, again, it would be devastating. OK, especially after the halving. Right. We'll go over that here in a little bit. So now let's look at prices. Right. So I have ASIC minor value pulled up. Um, pretty much stopped using it for like profitability because it's just so off like even right now you can see here they have a list at 875 a day versus mine the a612 and change a day which is a huge huge difference i did go through a couple of calculators and verified that it seems as though the mind the ASIC numbers are indeed more accurate as has been the case the entire time that this guy's been listed on here what i do have it on here for though are for the list of vendors okay so again, that doesn't mean all these vendors are the best vendors. I'm sure these are all sponsored spots, but these are the bigger names and it's easier to just see them here for price comparison, right? One other thing to know, as we have seen, is that these prices are usually outdated, right? So don't go by the list here. You got to click on, on, click on them individually, unfortunately, to see the actual prices, right? So we'll go through them just to get an update on price, right? Last time we did it, it was in the... It was crazy high. It was like 4,500 to 6,000. Let's look at it now. So on BT miners, their March batch is 35. April batch is about 3,000, right? So by Paratech, they have it at 34.99. Apex TO, 3,200. NHash has it at 33.50 after shipping. Cool Dragon, 3,200. ASIC Marketplace, 3,400. Crypto Miner Bros, 3,500. And then CMC last at 3,600. So we can see now it's in that range. It's anywhere from 3,000 to 3,500 or 3,600, right? So we can see that range. Again, like I mentioned before, it had shot up all the way because it was in that range, right? It was on BT Miners, had it for $29.99 for the longest even after the initial release just because it wasn't too popular, right? Everybody was focused on the K3, making 40 bucks a day. So all the hype was there. And not even on the K7 as much, right? But it was mainly there. So again, it kind of did stay out there until this thing actually shipped. 
And I think once they realized how few units were actually made, the prices went up, right? It went up to, again, to that $4,500 to $6,000 range, okay? But see, this is the danger with buying these things at such an inflated price above the MSRP. Because, again, the reason it's at that price is because of demand, right? And there's no supply because it's sold out everywhere. But all it takes is for Bitmain to do a restock, which they did, and for it to tank that price, which is good for us who are looking for one, right? Or if anybody who's looking for one versus those who bought at those crazy prices, okay? Because pretty much as soon as they announced that restock, the prices went right back down, okay? And now they're back in this range, okay? So one other huge factor to consider is, like we mentioned, that halving. That halving is going to be in approximately 38 days, 11 hours. Not going to be exactly to this point, right? It's more of an estimate. It's based off of the block, so it can be up or down a couple of days, but give or take, it's about the end of April. Okay, so the estimated date they have here is about April 28th. So keep in mind that it's going to be in that range and it is a straight halving, meaning it is going to be a full 50% reduction in the block rewards. Okay, I know sometimes the word having gets misconstrued and they kind of interchange it with like, you know, the reward reduction, right? But in this case, it is an actual halving, meaning whatever you're yielding prior to that, it's going to get cut in half. Okay, so it's a huge, huge reduction in coins. Okay, which is going to drastically affect your profitability, okay? So one big thing that I've been seeing a lot of people do, which is incorrect, is they go on mine the ASIC or ASIC minor value, wherever, and they look at the profitability, and they're like, okay, it's going to get cut in half, right? We got a halving, so instead of making 12 bucks a day, it's going to go down to 6 bucks a day, right? Still not too bad. The problem there is no, that is not the case, Okay? Keep in mind that this profitability number, which is used here and also used on like ASIC minor value, wherever you get your numbers from, it's based on, you have to look at the number as a whole, right? So that number is including the electric, okay? So if you have this number, you're having your electric rate, which your electric is not changing. You have to have your yield and then subtract your electric to get your new profit. Okay, and it does make a drastic difference. Okay, so I'm going to do the manual calculation with mine the ASIC just so you can kind of confirm and I'm going to verify it with another calculator. Again, the kind of hard thing with these altcoin miners is that because they're not as popular, they're not as small, it's hard to really get accurate numbers, right? A good example is just on here, right? Like mine the ASIC has it at 12 bucks profitability, ASIC miner value has it at eight. That's a pretty drastic difference. Okay, and even on some of the other calculators, it was the same thing. So just want to confirm the numbers. So, so far, mine the ASIC, for the most part, has been accurate. Again, you got to keep in mind, this weekend they did have that thing, but double-checked it and it looks pretty good now. So the way that we can find our total yield, right, because it does have it listed down here, but after electric. Okay, we want to see our yield prior to that. We want to see the base yield that we're going to earn. Okay, so the way we can do it, because we do have that number there, is we can see our fiat value, right? Which is $17.25. Okay, so we're going to divide that by HNS's current price. Divided by 0 0.036, and that's going to give us our yield. Okay, so currently, as of right now, you would yield about, let's do easy math, 480 coins, right? So 480 HNS. Okay, so that is what's going to get cut in half. So we divide that by two. And it's going to give us, we're just going to do it at 240, right? So take your 240 now, now multiply that by the current price, which is 0 0.036. And that's going to give us our new total income in fiat, right? In USD. So now it's $8.64, right? That's going to be our total yield in USD equivalent. So now that number we subtract from our electric, okay? This is at a 10 cent kilowatt hour. It's at $5. So we take our A64 and we subtract our $4.99, five bucks, and this is our new profitability. Okay, it's $3.65. Okay, it's not $6. Okay, 
And it's good to understand that concept. So also if you're looking at BTC miners, like when the BTC halving happens or with Litecoin having happens, that way you can look at it and know that that's not how you do it. Okay, you have to look at your yield. This is why I harp so much on focusing on your yield because that's the best way to do your you know, predictions, uh, calculations, and how to look at everything, right? Because again, ASICs are more long-term. You're stuck on that algo, you're stuck on that project, you have to keep in mind the future because that's how you're gonna get your ROI. It's not like with GPUs and such where you can just switch algos, you're here, you're stuck with it, you wanna look at future projections, okay? So again, our new, after the halving, profitability will be $3.65, okay? Which is a drastic difference because that brings us now down to like number 18, 19, right? So huge, huge difference there. It's not the $6 range, right? And also factor in, this is not including the increase in difficulty, okay? More units are getting shipped, again, from this restock. Those haven't arrived yet. So we're gonna lower there also, okay? So it's gonna be more than this. This is kind of like your best case scenario, but this is just to get you off of the mindset that it's gonna be this amount or even half that amount, okay? It's gonna be significantly less than that. Also, keep in mind, another huge factor is that's the case also if the price remains the same. The other thing that can happen is we get price appreciation from this, okay? I wouldn't put a whole lot of weight into that though because we're concerned with the price appreciation after, okay? We may have this run up into it, right? We might start seeing like, oh, you know, it's hitting four cents, five cents, but then the halving happens and then everybody takes profits and then it finds that new range, okay? Kind of like what we saw with like Flux. For any of you GPU miners, we had that halving, we had that nice run up into it and then it kind of fell off a bit right? Ultimately finding a new range, finding a new normal, okay? And we're going to see that here as well. Although it is possible, we do get a run up and we do stay up, right? But again, I like to think of more like realistic, more worst case scenarios when I'm doing these projections, okay? So that's the way I look at it. So just factor that in, okay? So it'll be about three and change if the price stays the same. If we do get more price appreciation, cool, and we'll be even better off. Okay, so just factor those things in. Hopefully we do stay up, we do stay bullish. But again, just to verify those numbers, on what to mine, we had calculated on here, it was gonna be about 479. On what to mine, it was 484. So that gave credence to the numbers there. So ultimately that does look about the range we're gonna be at, right? Um, so now, even though it's not looking too good there, these are the reasons to possibly consider this guy still, right? So it's, it's not financial advice. These are just things that most likely those of you who are thinking of purchasing them, this is probably what your reasoning is, right? Because I know this is mine, okay? One of the big things that we already knew going into it is that most likely when this guy dropped, it was going to be essentially the only miner that's profitable for Handshake, okay? And so far, even with that tiny amount of miners that actually shipped, it's already just about true. The only other one that's profitable is the HS6 coming in at 62 cents a day, right? Drastic, drastic difference. Everything else is in the red, okay? And that's just now. All it may take is just the difficulty increase from this shipment coming in to cause this to be unprofitable and these to go down even further, let alone the halving that's going to happen and is definitely going to bomb all of these. Okay, so even if it stays profitable after this next shipment, when that halving happens, it's pretty much guaranteed it will be the only profitable miner and most likely the only miner on the network. Okay, so the gamble or the bet there is that even whatever Gold Shell releases this spring or summer, which they'll probably release the HS7, Chances are this guy is so far ahead that the HS7 or whatever they want to call it releases, it's still probably going to be better than it, okay? Because of how far ahead and advanced it is, okay? Hopefully they do release something competitive, but realistically, I don't think it's going to be close, right? I think the best case scenario is that it's comparable, 
Okay, maybe the following year they'll have something, but again, by then the having will have happened, and it's possible that these things are crazy expensive. Again, any hardware purchases I'm considering, it's pretty much this year, right? Because as soon as that having, we get close to the having, and especially anything after the having, these prices can potentially skyrocket, right? So most of my purchases, whatever I purchase, as far as ASICs go, are going to most likely happen this year. Most likely at the latest, maybe this fall. The only other holdout that I might go in and like do something for would be if there's a a L7 replacement, if there's a L9 or something like that, which if it does happen, I would expect this fall. If it doesn't happen by this fall, then it's probably going to be out of my price range when it releases anyway, right? So again, as far as cheaper miners go, this is most likely the year, okay? So the other gamble, the other, other thing you're betting on, if you're thinking about this guy, is based on the fact that it's such a small market cap, Okay. It's not going to take a whole lot of liquidity or a whole lot of money to inflate this price. Okay, in my opinion, Bitmain is not going to let this thing fail. Okay, they're going to keep this price. Same with Gold Shell. If they do release the HS7, that would be a better way to advertise is to just pump the price, right? Make it more profitable, make it look profitable, right? That's if. HNS on its own doesn't pump the price, right? They may get traction, they may get partnerships, they may, something may happen with them where it does. The reason I don't give a whole lot of credence to that is that it's the bear market. They're not, they don't necessarily have like the pumponomics of a lot of the other tokens, right? They're not very popular. They're very decentralized. They don't really advertise. That's not really their thing. They kind of just work on their top level domains, they make it work and they make it happen, but it's not the most popular coin out there. That's why I wouldn't rely too much on them pumping on their own, but I could see like Bitmain or any of those having uh, their play in that, right? So again, those are the main things to look at if you're considering getting one. I know that's the main reason I'm looking at them or not looking at them. That's the reason I pre-ordered one. Still haven't gotten it yet, unfortunately, but that's the main reason is just the fact that it's going to be the only profitable miner and that the possibility of it being super profitable if the price increases significantly, right? I think we're all kind of looking for, I know what I'm looking for is for that like Kadena miner of two years ago, right? For when it first came out, it was a fairly good miner, but then the price increased like crazy, causing it to like freaking $50,000 miners, Right. And I think this is the gamble with this and why it looks so potentially looks good, right? People are just kind of gambling on that, right? So just a couple of things to consider, guys. One other tidbit of news that could be possible. There's no credence to this. There's no information. There's no rumor mill. Just throwing it out there is the possibility of this guy possibly being able to mine Sia coin also. Is it really possible? We don't know. Bitmain's never mentioned it. There's no rumors of it that I know of. It's just something based on the fact, because of the fact that Gold Shell does it on theirs. It's because of the way the algorithm works. It's Blake2B and SHA-3. Sia coin uses Blake2B, so it does have Blake2B chips in there. Okay, and that's the reason the Gold Shell ones can, but like, for example, the Sia coin only ones can't do it can't do handshake because it doesn't have the shot three chips okay so realistically no idea if it's even possible but something that wouldn't be too surprising if they wait till the sc7 drops and they decide to release a firmware update unlocking it or something but again no idea if it's even possible realistically i would give it a five percent chance of actually happening only because they would have probably mentioned it already Right. And the fact that this is such a small project, such a small coin, they're making such a small amount of miners. I highly doubt they want to put really any extra R&D into it. Right. Again, this first batch was only a couple hundred miners in comparison to like the BTC miners where they're releasing, you know, 50,000 at a time. Right. Not really sure they're going to put that much R&D into a tiny little feature affecting such a small amount of coins. Right. But just something to consider, something to think about. All right, guys. Well, just wanted to give you that update on that HS3. That way, in case you were thinking about getting it, that way you can be well informed.
right? A lot of things that are happening are going to affect it, and they're happening soon, right? 38 days away, okay? And it's going to make a drastic, drastic difference on the profitability. So just wanted to keep you guys updated because I know I have been getting a lot of questions about it. Hopefully you found some value in the video, guys. Please comment if you're getting one. Comment if you ordered one, if you already received yours, or if you're delayed like the majority of us. Let me know in the comments. Please like the video, guys. Thank you for watching, and I am out.